Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Bryce, and I'm with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conklin, New York. And what we're going to be doing today is factoring a quadratic equation when a does not equal 1. If we take a look at this problem, we see it's a quadratic equation because the exponent is 2. The number in front of that is not equal to 1. It's greater than 1. We have it equal to 0. We're not going to solve it right now. But that's just setting up the future. If this was not equal to zero, then we would have to get rid of whatever is on the right-hand side, bring it to the left, so that everything is on the left-hand side. First question we want to ask ourselves, is there a greatest common factor? We see that all the numbers are even. There are not any variables in every term. So we know that it's divisible by two. Is it divisible by anything higher than two? No, it is not, because... 2 is the third term. Okay, so let's factor out the 2. Simply what factoring out means is dividing everything by 2. Yes, you even can divide the 0 by 2. The 2 comes outside the parentheses. We get 14x squared plus 9x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to leave that 2 there on purpose because we're not changing the equation, um, we're going to keep it exactly the same. And that's what we have. Now the next thing that we have to do is find A times C. A, B, C. Remember the quadratic equation is in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. So a times c, in this case, is very easy, 14 times 1, which is 14. Now what we have to do is we're going to xbox the problem. Xboxing is really two steps. This is the x part of the problem. We draw an x. We take whatever a times c is and put it here on the top. We put b the B number, 9, we put that on the bottom. Now what are we going to do with that? We're going to have to find out these two empty spots. And what that means is a product and sum game. What two numbers multiply to be 14 and add up to be 9? Think about it. You have it in your head what two numbers multiply to be 14 and add up to 9? If we need a clue, since they multiply to be a positive number, they either ha both have to be positive or both have to be negative. If they add up to a positive number, that means they're both positive. Okay. So because they multiply to be a positive number and add up to be positive, that means they're both positive. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 plus 2 is 9. The box part. What we have to do, we have to set up the area. The box part of the question is a rectangle. With lines that transverse it that are going to be a little bit higher on the top, a little bit farther left on the bottom. On the left-hand side, sorry, it's going to be farther out on the left. And then, what do we do with this? We take the 14x squared and put it there. That's the A part. And we put C, the 1, right there. We take the 7 and the 2 and put them in here. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes in which spot, but this is 7x's, and this is 2x's. If they were negative, we'd bring the sign along. It would be negative 7x and negative 2, but they are not. Now that we have that filled in, we have to find the GCF of the left side. Greatest common factor of just the left side. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is 
What's the greatest common factor? What number goes in here? So 14x squared and 2x. 14x squared and 2x. What number goes into 14 and also goes into 2? The number 2. That's the largest one, greatest one. And x squared and x is x. Because they both have an x, we take the smaller exponent. Okay? This is just x. This is x times x. What's common? Just an x. Factor out the 14 is 2 times 7. That's 2. So we factored out the 2. We found the greatest common factor. Let's find the greatest common factor of here. It's easy. When there's a number 1 here, the only factor of 1 is 1. So the greatest common factor is 1. Now, what we have to do is fill out the top with the correct multiples. 2x times what number equals 14x squared? Well, I might want to say 7, but then that doesn't give us the x squared. We have to say 7x. Do the same thing here. 2x times what is 2x? That's easy, a 1. Now, check. Is 1 times 7x 7x? Good. Is 1 times 1 1? Great. So far, it checks. Now we have to write out the answer. Remember step number one. We had a greatest common factor. So we have to bring that to our greatest common factor into the answer. We can write 2x plus 1. If you wanted to, we could have wrote 7x plus 1. Because multiplication is commutative. Don't forget our equals 0. And there it is. We still have some more problems to do. You can always rewind this and listen to it again. Or you can start with this problem. Hit pause now and try the problem on your own. If not, I'll be taking you through it in just a moment. Okay, here we go. First thing we check, is there a greatest common factor? Yes, there is a greatest common factor. Even though they're both even, or all three of them are even, watch out because it's also divisible by 4. There's no variable in all the parts, so the greatest common factor is 4. We divide everything by 4. And I get 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. The next step that we have to do is find a times c. 3 times 4 is 12. Now let's x backs the problem. Remember, a times c goes here. So that's the 12. And this is going to be the product part. And then in the bottom goes b, which is 8. And this is the sum. Okay. So we set up the x part of the problem. We have to find the product and sum. What two numbers multiply to be 12 add up to be 8? They're both positive, so both of these have to be positive. What two numbers? 6 and 2. If you put down 2 and 6, don't worry. That's fine also. Now, we have to set up the box. The box is the area part. And what goes in the upper left-hand corner? A, which is 3x squared. What goes in the bottom right-hand corner? C, which is 4. Then we take these numbers, 6 and 2, and attach an x to it. So this is 2x, and that's 6x. If you reverse those, 
That's fine. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so we're going to be multiplying these. We come up with the same answer. Find the greatest common factor on the left-hand side. What's the greatest common factor of 3x squared and 6x? Looks like 3x to me. 3 goes into 3, 3 goes into 6, x goes into x squared and x. And this one is just 2 because there are no x's here. 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 4. Now fill in the top with the correct multiples. 3x times what is 3x squared? x. 3x times what is 6x? Looks like a 2. Let's check. Is 2 times x 2x? Yes. Is 2 times 2 4? Great. We have our area model and it works. Now we have to write down our answer. Don't forget step number one with our greatest common factor. Our greatest common factor was 4, so it's 3x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. We're going to use that equals 0 later on when we're solving for the roots, solving for the zeros, solving for the x-intercepts, graphing it, and etc. Let's take a look at the next problem. Here's the next problem. You can hit pause right now and do it on your own. I already showed you two. You should get this one pretty quick. And here's all the work with the answers. The first thing I found out is there's a greatest common factor of two, so I factored it out. A times C, ooh, negative 56, because there's a negative 8 there, okay? 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. We Xbox it. We say, what two numbers multiply to be negative 56 and positive 1? Negative 7 and positive 8. Now, the next thing that we do is we have the product and the sum. We set up the box find it. A goes here. C goes here. There's C. Remember, A, B, C. So there's C, there's A. Where does these negative 7 and negative 8 x's come from? Right here inside the product and sum game. Okay. We filled in the left-hand side. The greatest common factor of 7 and 8 is 1. x squared and x is just x. Greatest common factor between negative 7 and negative 8 is negative 1. Even though it's not the greatest one, we're going to use negative 1 here. X and X. Why do I say it's not the greatest one? Well, the greatest one is 1, but we're going to pull out that negative sign. Then we say negative 1 times what is negative 7X. Well, that's just 7X. Negative 1 times what is negative 8. That's 8. Everything checks in here. Just to make sure, x times 7x is 7x squared, x times 8 is 8x. Write down our answer. Don't forget step one where our greatest common factor was 2. Then we write 7x plus 8, x minus 1, both of the quantities in parentheses. Don't forget your equals 0. Now let's try this next problem. Here's number four. Hit pause now, then I'm going to go over the answer. Okay, the first thing we might want to do for the greatest common factor is pull out a two. Well, guess what? There's something bigger than a two that goes into it. Four goes into 16, four goes into 40, and four goes into Fifty-six. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Think about it. Eight. The greatest common factor is eight. Hit pause now if you didn't have a greatest common factor of eight. Do the work again. And here we go. So we divide everything by 8. We have 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0. Remember, at any part, when if you make a mistake where I'm at, just hit pause, erase it, or do it on another piece of paper and carry on. A times C, 2 times negative 7 
is negative 14. Okay, let's Xbox this bad puppy. Remember, in the top, we have A times C, which is negative 14, and this is going to be the product. And then in the bottom, we have B, which is 5. And that's what the numbers have to add up to. So they have to multiply to be negative 14 and add up to positive 5. Well, that tells me that the larger of the two numbers is negative, or sorry, positive, because this is positive. One of them is positive, one of them is negative to multiply to be a negative number. And the larger of the two is positive. Do you know what those numbers are yet? Hopefully you do. 7 times negative 2. Hit pause if you made a mistake and carry on. Okay, now we have to set up the box for the area of the problem. In the upper left hand corner goes A, which is 2x squared. In the bottom right hand corner goes C, which is negative 7. And then Okay, so classes were changing right then, so let's see if I remember exactly where we were. What we're doing is we're trying to find um, here, we put the 2x squared in there because that's A, negative 7 is C, so that's what we put in there. These two spots, we need the 7x and the negative 2x. Now, what we have to do is we have to fill in the left-hand side with the greatest common factor. What goes into 2x squared and negative 2x? There are two answers. What I'm going to use here is 2, because 2 goes into 2 and 2 goes into negative 2, and I am going to use x. I'm going to use the positive values whenever possible. Here is 7 and negative 7. That one has an x, that one doesn't, so obviously the greatest common factor, sorry, is positive 7. Now what we have to do is fill in the top. 2x times what? is 2x squared. Hmm, got it. x. And 2x times what is negative 2x? <laughs> no. Yes. Now let's check. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Okay. And 2x times x is 2x squared. Okay. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 1 is minus 7. Now let's write down the answer. Remember step 1, the greatest common factor is 8. So we have our 8 parenthesis 2x plus 7 and x minus 1 equals 0. Again, we're going to use that equals 0 later on when we're graphing it, when we're finding the, the uh, x-intercepts. Now let's take a look at the next question. Don't have a heart attack. This one, I just want you to take a look at. I want you to see it so that you understand that it doesn't have to just work with easy numbers. This does not have a greatest common factor. And when we do A times C, we get 1,470. Okay. So even though it takes a little bit more work, it does come out to be an answer. What I did was I just took 40 and 39 because I had to multiply to be a large number and 40 times 39 is close to, remember they have to add up to 79, it's close to half of it. Didn't quite work, still too small, went up a couple more, 49 times 30 worked. Just put the 49x and the 30x there, 42x squared and 35 there. If you did this on your own, more power to you. I just wanted to show you that this works. Have a great day. If you have any questions, ask me in class.